Welcome back to the channel. And today we are talking 55 plus active adult living communities on the Southwest Florida Gulf Coast. I have no doubt gone in and around this general subject matter a millions of times it feels like on the channel, but I don't know if I've ever made a single video that goes directly at it. It seems like it's really top of mind categorical. So that's what we're gonna to approach today. I broke down the video thinking about how to be the most helpful, one in sections. So you can look at a bunch of communities that have no relation to each other. Instead of doing that, we're gonna look at master plan versus affordability versus coastal proximity. And then I even have unique retirement. I think these four buckets will mainly cover what everyone's concerned with. And secondly, because there's a vast amount of communities, I focused on using new construction coming soon and, and newly built communities as examples. And the reason I say examples is that you need a consumable way, in my opinion, to use one or two communities to understand the geography and how that geography relates to a specific town. Then once you learn that information though, then everything gets a lot easier because there are so many resale communities that have no relevance if you don't know the area well or nothing simply is for sale, but it doesn't mean they couldn't be the perfect community for you. So I think once you get your head around it, you, get, you can get your head around many other things, if that makes sense. 20 birds, one stone. My name is Adam Hancock, and this is the Florida Relocation Guide YouTube channel, your smartest way to buy, sell, and or invest in the entire state of Florida. And if you resonate with today's video, I just launched a brand new one-of-a-kind community group. And what that allows me to do is get way more intimate in the approach of being in real time. So we do a couple of things in that group that don't exist elsewhere. One, I drop in every single week, for the most part, I drop in a basically blurb of everything that's going on, all incentives, where we're touring, all the trends we're seeing. I'm gonna start doing video version of that as well, that I'm calling like a ruminations brain dump that will be in there. You get the very first look at any free resources that we create on our website. We have a Sarasota relocation guide. We have a Tampa, a Naples, and we have data analytics tools that we build to help make it easier buying. But when I first make them, sometimes there's a two, three week delay. They go right there first. And lastly, you can hover over my individual face. I am the moderator of that group at any single time. And you can DM me directly. You can ask me specific questions that you may feel like are too little or don't relate to anything or you know, you don't want to watch a 60 minute long video to answer your specific question that you think is unique. You can do that right there as well. So please consider joining that. It's absolutely free and it's private to only members of this group. Without further ado, let's hop in. All right, let's kick it off with the category of master plan developments. And there's going to be overlap, no doubt. Anytime you're talking about this category, especially if you start talking about new construction, th think of this as a standardized test. I'm picking the best bucket, in my opinion, that they fit into. Ideally, they could overlap three, but this is the number one where another community may be different. Master plan to me simply means more when you leave your individual neighborhood. Everything on this list is gonna have unbelievable individual amenities, multiple floor plans, all these kind of things. You're gonna have restaurants in a lot of them, just like golf communities, uh, community groups, like-minded people, resort style pools, pickleball, bocce ball, all those kind of things are going to exist amongst these communities. But when you leave your neighborhood, do you also, are you also attracted to having downtowns and farmers markets and public events? Maybe you want multi-generational environment around you, not within the walls of your community, but maybe you don't want everything around you to be more similar to each other, like the villages in Central Florida. You want some variety. You just happen to want to come home and this is the vibe that you like. That's what I would classify this fitting into. I have four examples that I think will be really good examples of how to look at this whole thing across the entire state, really. Like if you if you got your head around these, you could probably ask me a question within that community group I mentioned, and I could probably give you a similar community from the Panhandle to north of Jacksonville. All right, number one, Del Webb Lakewood Ranch. So Del Webb, if you're not completely familiar, is the 55 and up brand of the Pulte Company, and Pulte sells homes out of its own name, Pulte Homes and it sells homes out of Del Webb. It sells an amenity rich, van, um, maybe more family friendly brand called DeVolsta. And then it has a more affordable brand called Centex. And that's the significant brands that it, it conducts. But, but Del Webb's interesting because it is a brand where they basically do mirror communities in different geographies. So say you like Naples, you have that there. Say you like Lake Ranch or you like Venice or you like Tampa Bay, you can kind of follow Del Webb around and I think that's actually the order that people do it in, in a way different version, but similar to like the Ritz Carlton condominium brand. A lot of folks will say, where are the Dell Webs at? Let me look if I like the towns versus saying where, what is the town? What communities are within it in that order? Dell Webb Lakewood Ranch, I, I say old school, 
but Lakewood Ranch was built in 1995. But Del Webb Liquid Ranch is a, a much more mature version of communities that exist right now. They're, they're basically like finished building, but all the homes are less than 10 years old. It's in a great location to the town. And it's really in the heart of giving you access to everything. I'm going to give you a little bit about the communities, but eventually in this video, it's going to look similar. But I want to have that context in case this sounds good. You kind of know homes, price points, all that kind of thing. And then, and then we'll move on. So, but it, Del Webb is on this list because I think it's a good starter for what happens next. Started at about $370,000 plus, 1,400 to about 3,000 square feet. You're gonna have single family homes and you're gonna have villas in here. Uh, four different home collections, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 uh, floor plans approximately, 21,000 foot square foot recreation center, fitness center. I'm gonna go fast here because I don't wanna bore you to death here. But group fitness center, um, resort style pool with lap lanes and spa, pickleball, bocce, and tennis, just to name a few. Okay, second one on the list when it comes to master plan would give you an alternative to this. At the time that Del Webb was building and was really in vogue like three years ago especially, its main competitor was a community called Crestwind. Crestwind is the first 55 and up I've, I've seen in anywhere that we sell in Southwest Florida uh, built by a community or a builder called Coulter. And Coulter, I was familiar with them from building luxury condominiums, Coulter Urban. They built the one condominium in St. Pete. I think they built the Saltaire also in St. Petersburg. Uh, the Beso that's right in the Quay District. They had up a lot of development. Um, they're involved in a lot of the Ritz branded projects as well. So the thing with them that I got excited when I first heard they were coming out was the level of luxury. And that's exactly what they did with both Crestwind, the 55 and up in Lakewood, and artistry, the North Sarasota below Lakewood single family neighborhood, there's a level of elegance that reminds me almost of a Toll Brothers and a Homes by Town. If you're not gonna do a custom build, it's as its highest end or higher on the higher end of what you can get versus a lot of the middle level builders. And they'll do a little bit more for you than they will as well without being semi-custom, if that makes sense. That's your alternative here, your juxtaposition between the Del Webb brand and the Crestwind brand, or the Coulter brand in general, I guess, Pulte versus Coulter would be pretty binary. It would be polarity, they're, they're different. You like one or you don't, because the location, they're so close to each other, that's not gonna be the differentiator. They're both in Lakewood Ranch, both offer similar geography benefits. And I hope I'm not going too fast. 500 grand to about 800-ish plus, 2,100 to 4,400 square feet. So you can go bigger here. Three home collections. They got a coastal island and a key that offer various floor plans within the home collections. Exclusive clubhouse to the residents. Pickleball, tennis, dog park, large and small. A lot of communities have that. Lit sidewalks. I don't know why I wrote that down. Resort style pool and spa. Uh, event plaza with food, food truck court, bocce courts, outdoor social areas. They have a smart fit training center. Um, and they have a full-time lifestyle director. So again, you're not gonna see crazy differentiators when it comes to individual amenities. This is gonna get down to if you already would have picked Lakewood Ranch and you found value in that, it gives you a juxtaposition of communities to pick from. And then we're gonna build on this as we go. Third one on this one, I'm gonna just mention four as examples again. Third one I wanted to mention here is called Del Webb Catalina. And the reason I wanted to mention this is when Del Webb Lakewood Ranch finished, again, they're gonna do the next one, always do the next one. Del Webb Catalina is the coming soon product from uh, the Del Webb brand, also in Lakewood Ranch, just north of the two communities I just mentioned. This is in the Northeast District that's around Star Farms, Esplanade Azario, the new library, if, you, if you're familiar with that area. It's above State Road 70, below State Road 64. But this is gonna give you a newer option, whether your, your current timeline doesn't necessarily align to buying right now, but it could in 12, 15, 18 months, could you'd want to be down here. This would get you a nice territory. Plus, anytime they do a new community, a lot of times they add stuff that they didn't know to add four years ago. Pricing coming soon. I will alert you. Stay in that community group. You'll find that stuff out first. Collections are also coming soon. But the best way to learn about these communities is look at all the other, the million other Dell Webs in Florida. They don't do stuff that different. That'd probably be a good idea, both pricing and type of homes. Amenities. 15-acre resort-style amenity campus that is on a 70 acre lake. So that's a big one. 12 miles of pathways, walking trails, sidewalks within the Del Webb uh, Catalina community itself. Tennis, pickleball, and basketball courts. 
dog park, resort style pool and spa. There's a community garden in here. I've seen them doing that a lot up in that area, especially at schools. A clubhouse with a fitness center and activity rooms, poolside cabanas, fire pit lounge, and on-site restaurant and bar. So Del Webb Catalina, not the only coming soon on this list, but it's something to really look out for. It could give you a huge opportunity. And this area, that area is going to, that quadrant of Lakewood Ranch, I kind of look at it like Lakewood Ranch was built here and here along between the interstate and Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. And then all, all they're going to do is opposite camera here, but they're going to move east and they go across Lakewood Ranch Boulevard and they start to mess with like Lorraine and Uline and Bourneside. They mirror the exact same thing. If you look up south to north, it's the same thing. Where Lakewood Ranch High School is up here, the area that I'm talking about now is up here. Just It's just to the right of it. It's adjacent. Same idea, but they're really building stuff out there. They're going to have restaurants out there, a lot more amenities. So it's going to be cool. And this whole, whole idea is 12 to 18 minutes, depending on how fast you drive down the 35 mile an hour Lorraine Road um, to Waterside's district as well and downtown Lakewood Ranch. Okay. And then one more, we're going to just play popcorn here uh, that I think is interesting. Hop all the way up to Wesley Chapel, Florida and Esplanade Wiregrass. So the Esplanade brand is a brand that people are borderline obsessed with when it comes to Taylor Morrison. So Taylor Morrison is the Mediterranean competitor to like meal communities and that level builder, in my opinion. But they stand out in, in two specific areas. One is the Esplanade brand. Every Taylor Morrison build, a build is not with the Esplanade brand. They have Park East, they have Casilla, they have Palmero, they have other brands. But the Esplanade brand is their luxurious, amenity-rich brand, and it's just elegant. So the way to look at this one is if you took Esplanade, Azario, and Lakewood Ranch, still up in the top two, three choices that pe people pick every single time. Now, it has golf but you don't need to love golf to do that one. You take that same community, you drop it north of Tampa in Westy Chapel, which is the Lakewood Ranch of Tampa Bay. Your price doesn't drop 50K, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars per floor plan. The people at Esplanade Wiregrass, when I talked to them about six months ago, they couldn't even believe what the pricing was at Esplanade Azaria. That's how disconnected it is. But that's a huge advantage if you, if you have no romanticism to being close to Sarasota versus Tampa. It's just suburbs, individual neighborhoods. Also, Esplanade at Wiregrass is in a master plan community called Wiregrass Ranch. It's quite lovely. It was owned by one family that really had intentionality around what they wanted to do with it. So the reason the Esplanade Wiregrass is 55 and up and none of the Esplanades in Sarasota are technically 55 up active adult communities. They live like it, but none of them are technically that is because this land was zoned for 55 and up. So they had to figure out a way to do it because the people in Wiregrass Ranch wanted end-to-end -end community living. They wanted someone that wasn't ready to buy yet, so rentals, first-time home buyer, a family that has a small child, a family that has three kids, a move-up buyer family, and then an uh, empty nester, retirement, and then even like end of retirement affordability with villas. So when they went, individual builders went in here, they had to go in there with strings attached. So Esplanade came in with their brand, and they ended up being on the 55 plus land. That's why it happened. So it's unique for that facet. But then the rest is all the good Esplanade stuff. From $427,000 it starts at, 1,689 square foot to about 3,000, two to four bedrooms, two to three and a half baths, and mostly if not 100% one story floor plans. The floor plans we're gonna be working with here are the Roma, Areza, um, Azuro, I think it's pronounced, the Farnese, Lazio. They have a Lazio plan with a three car garage in here. The Ambra, or the Ambra, the Leticia, Letizia, butchering these, I think. <laughs> Those ones, I don't, I don't sell that one a lot. And the Palazzo. If you take the Palazzo and the Lazio, maybe the Farnese as amazing floor plan examples, the Lazio is the Palazzo's uh, child. Identical floor plan, literally to a T. One is 700 to 800 square feet smaller. But if you walk them, you're like, it doesn't feel that way at all. So it gives you a nice little advantage on price point. But the layout of those plans on how they orient to the price point and the square footage is some of the best I've ever seen. Um, I think that's where, you can, regardless of how you feel about Taylor Morrison and the style and the builder itself, I think they went in that category. Fitness and uh, aerobic center, meeting and gathering spaces, catering kitchen. You have a billiard room, a multi-purpose room, heated resort style, pool and spa. You have events lawn, fitness lawn, bowl, um, there's a bark park, tot lot, uh, centered at grandkids for this community. 
uh, sports courts, tennis, pickleball, bocce ball, and spa treatment room. So that's all I want to include, I think, for... Oh, and there's, there's a cafe in the Esplanade community as well, a toasted cafe. So like quick bites and eats and that kind of thing. That's all and master plan, not to get too crazy here, but that gives you some really good examples. I'm not excluding Naples on this list completely. I'm just gonna bring them back in um, later in the video and let's hop and talk about coastal proximity. Okay, major category number two, I'm calling affordability. And it's really important to note here that this is perspective affordability. If you're in the middle of any home search, beginning stages or even touring on site, you're probably honed in on one, two, three specific areas. And those are maybe plan A. Well. Outside of any of those areas, there's always a plan B and a plan C that exists and you may not even be, a, they might not even be on your radar at this point. But once they get on your radar, you realize that, you know, financial leverage, home size, maybe amenities you wouldn't have gotten, even lifestyle, if you're not into what the minds of the people or the average people that are honed in on option A are, you can really get some sort of benefit. And that's what this is about. Not affordable to the world itself but affordable in perspective terms to the plan A that's nearby. I actually have a really good example, I think for both the Sarasota Metro, the Tampa Metro and the Naples Metro that we're gonna hit next. All right, number one on that list is Del Webb Bayview. And I'm giving Del Webb a lot of accidental flowers on this video, but they're just good examples of where they sit in town to describe. Well, De Del Webb Bayview is in a town called Parrish, Florida. And Parrish would be considered to the Sarasota Metro as junior Lakewood Ranch to most people. A lot of people aren't even aware it exists until they're venturing around Lake Ranch. They start to creep up in the northern districts and the, the criteria doesn't work and they end up like accidentally getting in this one area. Well, Del Webb Bayview was being built in parallel. It's a little newer, but it was being built in parallel for the year of 2020, 21 and a bit of 22 against Del Webb Lake Ranch. So it was the same builder positioning a similar community in two different areas to each other. And you weren't saving 10 grand, hundreds of thousands of dollars per floor plan. And then I had people that were like, you know, I'm not someone particular that would go to the beach every day. I had people like that. And when you, and when I, I used to show them, if you look at where Delaware Lakewood Ranch is built, it's a lot closer than Parrish on a map, it looks like to the coast, but it's not 10 minutes away. 23, 28 miles away, you're talking 40, 45 minutes conservatively to like your closest beach, which would probably be Lido Beach. So if you're like, I'm okay, I, I'm not romantic about all the communal amenities outside this community, I'm okay with a more, little bit more up and coming parish, then Del Webb could be a, a real winner when it comes to the Bayview area. And it's only going to get better out in that, that particular section. Real quick. $371,000 starting price here, 1,400 to 3,300 square feet, single family homes, 14 floor plans. And just, you're going to see a similar vibe here, but just in case you're interested in one particular community, just want to share amenities. 22,000 plus square foot clubhouse, a resort style pool, zero entry heated pool. They have a sailfish bar and grill out in this uh, with a restaurant on site. Not every community has a restaurant on site. So that's a big benefit to these style communities. Ballroom, Resistance pool and spa, pickleball, tennis, bocce ball, vet lawn, amphitheater, dock and kayak launch out here, dog park, walking paths, full-time lifestyle director. You get the point here. There's a man gate. There's a beautiful waterfall front entrance out there. And before I move on to Tampa, just to mention, Coulter Land, which builds Crestwind and builds those artistry and the urban communities I was mentioning, they also have a land development company. Coulter Land is responsible for Bayview itself. Del Webb is a community within it. So I hear many things are coming because of the culture association. One, it would make a lot of sense to me for culture to have an actual new construction community in their own land development. So they could, that could be the newest Crest 155 out there. I've also heard of a coming soon, two years from now, Del Webb, that is going to go out to the parish area as well that's nearby. So just food for thought. All right, Tampa Bay. So if you take a similar conversation, Tampa is much harder to get your head around. There's probably... Tampa, the big problem is you got to decide on what even is plan A, right? Is because uh, you have the coast, you have Tampa City. Like, what do you want to be close to? It's much bigger than Sarasota. Sarasota is simple. So do you deem the city as the ideal and then everything around that's plan B, C? Or do you deal Pinellas County and St. Pete Beach and that area as ideal? And so you got to pick that first, right? So it's more intricate. But when it comes to the suburbs, a lot more clear cut. Take the coast completely off the table if you're looking at suburban housing where a lot of the 55 and up new construction especially exists. So you're, now you're talking Tampa city limits it is the attraction. That's the A. Well, when you talk suburban housing, to me, it's pretty clear cut. Most people go north to Westy Chapel, which I mentioned uh, with that Esplanade community. 
straight above the city of Tampa by about 23 miles, or they go east. If you go east, the ideal here, I get this is rapid fire, so please message me if you need anything cleared up. But if you go east here, then the benefit of going east, it's a little bit more mature, but you get suburban housing, but a lot of times it's a little closer to town. We're going north, a little hairy getting down. The primary east parts were Brandon, Florida, Riverview, Progress Village. You could even throw Valrico and Lithia where Fishhawk is based in that area. A lot of military family go, go over there, but a lot of it's proximity to town. If that's what was deemed a benefit, I can't get this kind of housing in the heart of town at these pricing. This price is because it's very urban, South Tampa, downtown, et cetera. I go here as a, as a good benefit to that. Well, the junior version of that is just to get further and a little weirder than what would be ideal. And further and weirder in this conversation is basically just going straight south because you're on the water. So you can't go, you can't go uh, southwest. You're going straight south. And the southern version, Palo Beach, you hit Rus Ruskin, Sun City Center, and a town called Wamama. Wamama is where the community on my list, South Shore Bay is based. It's a Lennar based community. And what you do is that huge benefit of getting closer to town, you, you cut that out by like 15, 20 minutes at least, right? So now you're not that close. You're not close enough to make it so dangerous that it's attractive for people to like lean into. That's one. Secondly, you get really parallel in an odd way to water. And typically you wouldn't say getting close and parallel to water is a negative, but you get parallel, not to the Gulf pieces, you get parallel to the Tampa Bay in an area that's very unfunctional, especially if you don't have a boat and you're not on the water in Apollo Beach. So what, I, what I'm saying there is to get to St. Pete Beach and Clearwater and that whole coast, which is in this metro, you gotta go all the way down through Sarasota Bradenton and go up the Skyway, because there's no ferry that takes you across or not a functional one for the everyday person. And then, or you got to go all the way up to Tampa, cut all the way across and go down the Howard Franklin uh, or, you know, other means of getting over there. So it's not, it, it makes it a little odd in both directions, but because of that, you get not, you don't save a little bit of money. You save a lot of money. And then the builders down there, they have a little bit more land, a lot of affordable builders. Lennar heads up South Shore Bay, multifamily and single family homes, 1,400, 2,800 square feet, 19 floor plans, 300,000 to about 550-ish. Um, amenities uh, are actually interesting. So it's gated, sports courts, pickleball and tennis courts, fitness center, private resort style pool, swimming pool, clubhouse, kayak, paddleboard. And this is one of the communities that has the crystal water lagoon. So the, the concept, which we're going to talk about more in a minute, of everything but the beach, uh, that you, you want to be in that metro, you want to be near the city, you need to save a little money. And the crystal water lagoon satiates the need for you and or your kids versus having to go all the way to the Gulf, which would be the negative, then you can save a lot of money. And one interesting example too, is just you're kind of in the middle. So if you viewed the middle as a bad thing, it could also be a good thing, is there's a bartender um, that's at the Libby's that I was talking to in Lakewood Ranch off of Lorraine Road, which is a bit down there. And then her boyfriend worked at a restaurant at Armature Works, which is on the river outside of downtown Tampa. And they live in Wamama, not just because they're young and it's a starter home, but because they're going like this indirectly. And I don't know where else you'd live to be able to accomplish that. So if you think food for thought there, you want access to everything, but also nothing. Interesting. And I mentioned one more for you um, in the Fort Myers area or the Naples area, rather. So if you're talking Naples Metro as a whole, very similar to the Wamama conversation of it being kind of in that abyss area. Well, that's what North Fort Myers, where Del Webb Oak Creek is based to that area, in my opinion. So what it gets you is it gets you inland in the northern northeast Fort Myers area, parallel to the Cape Coral area. And what that puts you is it looks like you're around a lot of water. But Cape Coral has no beaches. It's all, it's all canals. If you don't have a boat, that's not functional for you. And if you actually want to go to Gulf beaches, any way you slice it, I don't know how you get less than over an hour to any beach. Captiva, Sanibel, North Fort Myers Beach, Estero Island, that whole area, you got to go like, oh, it's a... It's a, it's a commute, right? So you get all the way over here and you're like, why would I do that? The only reason you should consider that because you probably weren't targeting it for lifestyle reasons necessarily. You need to get some benefit in my opinion, or at least be aware of it. It needs to be newer and maybe every other area wasn't new construction. You wanted the new one. It needs to have amenities you wouldn't have gotten elsewhere. It needs to be cheaper. Maybe it should be all of those things. And then you could say like, yeah, this is intentional. This is intentionality, right? Del Webb Oak Creek, 
$356,000 starting, 1,400 to 4,000 square feet, single families, three home collections, resort style pool and lap lanes. This is a natural gas community, if that matters to you. Less than 1,000 home sites should be in here, as long as they don't expand it. Fire pit, poolside bar, and grill restaurant again. Eight pickleball courts, which is awesome. Three pickleball courts, because this one's newer. Spa, clubhouse, 86 acres of sparkling lakes. A lot of the eastern Naples areas, you're going to see real heavy on the lakes and real nature-centric which I've seen really way bigger in the Venice and this and Venice and Naples area than I have in the Sarasota area. Uh, 97 acres of nature preserve. The one kind of hidden benefit, if you view it as a benefit, is you're not in the woods. You're 15 minutes to down. You're not, you're not next to downtown Naples, which is very far south, almost in Marco Island, and it's on the coast. But so you go like this. But you're 15 minutes to uh, Fort Myers downtown, and which it's more eclectic. I think it's a little underrated, you know, it's to each their own, but it's not like there's nothing around you. And that's only going to get better. Um, yeah, I'll end it there, but you get the point here. So Delaware Oak Creek, I think would be the Naples example. And let's hit coastal proximity really quick. And then I want to talk about one unique one at the end. Okay, three on this list is coastal proximity. And this will be slightly quicker because I only have one community to talk about. A lot of the reason is I of the beholder. What is coastal to you versus me? All of Southwest Florida could be coastal to you. But my cutoff is really... You know, you get in that 20 plus mile range, which is basically everything else on this list. If you went on the internet and tried to find a resort style community, 55 and up designated, built 2015 or newer, very difficult to get under that. So that's one, but that puts you at a 40 plus minute range to the beach if you're conservative for most places to actually get over there on city roads, barrier islands, et cetera. But two, more importantly, probably in this kind of video, it's really to prompt questions to learn more information so we can answer them specifically. Because if you open that can of worms, you're talking hundreds of communities you're not aware of that you don't need to learn about too early or you have no context to even begin making a decision. So I like to keep it simple for that fact. There is one anomaly in that conversation, in my opinion, that stands out right now, and it's South Venice, Florida. It sits above Cape Coral, south of Sarasota city limits, in a district called Welland Park. And Welland Park, has a new district called the Playmore District because they have two total districts. Well, there's a community called Brightmore by Mattamy Homes at Welland Park. This is a 55 and up designated Mattamy Homes community, which one offers master plan because Welland Park has its own downtown and multiple communities that surround it. And it also offers affordability and prospective terms. So I, I had mentioned that overlap. But the big reason it sits here is it's 12 and a half miles to three beaches, Venice Beach, Casperson Beach, the Sharks' capital of the world, Brohar Beach, the only dog beach in the county. But also, uh, more importantly, when people make choices here, a lot of times this comes up in the conversation by them trying to figure out the coast, then finding this, then also saying, oh, cool, it has a downtown. Oh, it has all this other stuff. It unravels versus typically it un unravels starting at those other things and working its way down. Villas and single family homes, two to three beds, two to three baths, two car garages, and mostly one story, if not all. 1,400 to about 2,500 square feet, 12 floor plans, gated entry, Really nice amenities here in a world that doesn't have a ton of abundant amenities. That's the thing, that's the thing to mention. Welland Park went pretty no frills. You'll have communities in there with zero amenities with $300 HOAs, so just food for thought. Expansive clubhouse with fitness center and social hall. It's waterfront, lakefront. A resort style pool, lap pool spa, nine pickleball courts with, I believe, a full stadium court here because that's getting real progressive in Sarasota. Paul Park, indoor and outdoor gathering areas, lifestyle activities, events, classes, and more. But Brightmoor by Mattamy Homes in the Welland Park District of South Venice, Florida. Mouthful, I think it's an interesting one to look at. Okay, in the last category for this video, I'm gonna call inland retirement, but more than that, intentionality probably. And this is where it gets into real micro land. One, hopefully you agree with at least half of my methodology, my premises, because if you do, potentially this adds additional value. But if you don't, it could be chaotic in as far as, you know, you really got to be painting a picture to understand like where all these things fit. If not, you're just in a sea of new home communities that you're like, all right, are they just building another one because they're done with the other one? Well, I have two communities in this world where what this world basically would be to me is, yes, they might be east. They might be inland. There might be a master plan component to them. They might even offer affordability because of those two other things I mentioned. However, as a primary choice, even if those other things are on people's mind when choosing them, these are ones that potentially they were chosen for the individual things that they offer that others don't. It was an individual benefit, not geography or a specific category on its own. 
The first of those, and, and one sits in Tampa, one sits in Naples. Sarasota, I don't feel like has this as much. One, it's very condensed. So if you go east, it's not as east as some of these other ones. But I feel like Sarasota fits the other categories I mentioned way harder. So I, uh, I left that one off for this one. But one is in the Naples area, and it's simply called Del Webb Naples. Similar theme here. Del Webb Naples uh, sits in an area called Ava Maria, which has a very interesting history if you never uh, looked it up. So check that out. But Ava Maria is east. It's just best way to describe it. It is straight east of like your Vanderbilt beaches and your North Naples area and that kind of area. Um, you know, similar conversation, $340,000 plus starting price, 400 1,400 to 2,800 square feet. You have condos, villas, and single families in this one. But what's interesting, one, the reason I mentioned condos, you're gonna see here next, what this one offers is Panther Run, an 18-hole professional golf course. I have not come across a Del Webb community personally that has golf as a component. 18,000 square foot resort style pool and beach entry. There is a bar and grill called the Rusty Putter, which I believe sits at the 18th hole. I guess it could be called the 19th hole, technically. Uh, outdoor fire pit, three lane lap pool, te two tennis courts, 12 lighted pickleball courts, four bocce ball courts, outdoor amphitheater, jetted hot tub, community garden. You're going to see a lot of overlap here, but except for the golf. Two clubhouses with 30,000 square feet total. State of the art fitness center, movement studio, library, arts, crafts, and activity rooms. Clubhouse, the Oasis Club is a 12,000 square foot clubhouse featuring fitness center, movement studio, locker rooms because of the golf, activities rooms, arts and crafts, uh, grand hall. Uh, which is an additional clubhouse. You have community rooms, catering, billiards, golf simulator in here, and outdoor veranda. This is one when I speak to people, when I view it, when I, when everything involved with it. This is a place, this is a, um, this is a resort. It's, a, I mean, I, I get they're all resort style. This is a place that people go and stay. They, they, they go for all these reasons and they, they live that life. That's the day to day. That's the, the daily golf. All the buddies are there. It's a community within a community. And yes, it is not super close to the beach. It just like the Northern Fort Myers conversation, but it offers things that you would maybe sacrifice another community that was closer in order to choose these. So one example there, Del Webb Naples. The second one's really unique. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna straight read some stuff from their website because it's that unique, but it's called Angeline and it is out in the Pasco County area, which is North of Tampa. So again, far from the beach, affordable, all those kind of things, um, but offers way, way more. For this one, I'm actually gonna hit the community first. We'll circle back to the builder because I think that'll only add more value, not less. Pasco County, 6,200 acre mixed use in the biggest way possible. Two builders, again, I'll circle back. First, sustainability, efficiency, that kind of thing. Two, a two gig fiber network of internet here, so that should be super fast. And if you live out here, you might work from home, especially. Street leaf solar powered street lights, so obviously optimize the 360 days of sunshine you're gonna have in this area, less light, wildlife pollution, if, that, if you're into that, which maybe you shouldn't, maybe if you're not really into that, maybe you should care about that. A sustainable fruit and vegetable farm will be the premier amenity for Angeline residents. The farm at Angeline will offer fresh local produce for purchase and engaging farm to table, family friendly events, nutrition classes, and a variety of educational programming and so much more. Haven't seen that quite yet. On the walk, ride, outdoor enjoyment side of things, 3,600 acres of natural undeveloped green space, a planned network of trails and pathways that could span 100 miles, connecting to a regional trail. Trails will include a wide variety of distances, loops, services, etc. So you have multiple modes of transportation, bike, run, walk, etc. Then in addition to that, so you're getting into Babcock Ranch territory with this one, if you've ever heard of that community. Angeline Academy of Innovation, a future-ready middle and high school STEM magnet school, which is already open, powered by a strong community of industry partners with an emphasis on science, technology, engineering. The school immerses students in real-world learning through design challenges and experiences that will allow students to make meaningful connections. A future K-5 elementary school that's equipped with advanced te technology, innovation, uh, innovative teaching methods, and a nurturing environment is set to also release. And then in addition to all of that, you're gonna have a future Angeline, Angeline Lagoon and Town Center, again, because this is built by Metro Places, will be at the heart of Angeline. The Town Center has potential for 4 million square feet of office, shopping, dining, and entertainment. An additional 2 million square feet of future commercial space means that Angeline will truly be a city within a city. And if you've ever been out again to that Babcock Ranch or you look that up in, in Lower Puna Gorda, 
Uh, that uh, with, with all that commercial space, they even put a full co-working center in that one as well. So, and they put electric autonomous vehicles in that one. I don't know if that's what's planned for here, but you could literally, that, that could drive you around to the two town centers where you co-work and to your kid's school, which is kind of wild. On top of all of this, one of those partners is Moffitt Cancer Center. So anchored by a 775 acre life sciences research park for Moffitt Cancer Center, Angelina will feature clinical research facilities as well as commercial space that could total up to 24 million square feet. Medical world, business, visitors, et cetera. So I'm not gonna read this whole, this whole thing, but the reason that I wanted to go that detailed and not just riff on this topic is again, you read all of that. Are people actually going out to Northern Pasco County and choosing this just for affordability alone? I don't think so. I think it's more intentionality. So I do think these could sit in four separate categories. There are multiple other examples of this, both in the resale and new construction conversation within all three of the Southwest Florida metros. But I will digress this video here, not to get too crazy. If you give me just uh, 30 seconds, um, I'd like to tell you some other cool things that you can get involved with going on with the Sunshine State Company. Thank you guys so much and let's wrap up. Okay, that is a wrap for today's video. Really hope you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Adam Hancock. If you enjoyed today's take, please consider subscribing to the Florida Relocation Guide YouTube channel. I've consolidated any efforts in Tampa and Naples all in this one channel. You'll see the whole world here. A little bit more volume of videos in order to cover this correctly, but everything from Florida economics and real estate market day to day to individual neighborhood advice and everything in between. This is just the best place to see what's coming next. Beyond that, if you are in the market now or 20 years from now in Florida, I own a brokerage called the Sunshine State Company, full scale residential brokerage across the whole entire state, really unique organization. So please consider reaching out. You can call, you can text, you can email, you can do anything in between. Within the community, we have a couple of cool things. One, please consider joining my new community group. It's private to only members of watching this. It doesn't even include real estate agents on my team. There's no mortgage lenders. There's no title companies. No one's in here trying to get business from you. This is simply a way for me to give you information that I can't give you elsewhere. Everything I'm working on all week, uh, all of these thoughts, all of these minds, this is just one video. This doesn't include any other, other conversations I'm having. I brain dump a rumination style thing in there every single week for the most part. Any free guides I create while doing research, you get here first, free downloads. And, and then more importantly than any of that, potentially, is you could hover over my face at any point. It's all over the place in that group. And you can send me a private chat that no other members see. Any individual question as narrow as, what happens if I am a snowbird and should I worry be about worried about safety? Uh, my community is not gated. I'm from California. Is that going to be a problem? Even as narrow as that, I will answer them all individually as fast as humanly possible on my side. So please consider that. The sunshinestateco.com we'll put here is our website. All the free guides we've ever created are on there. You can join a newsletter. Uh, there are blogs, there are readable versions of almost every video we've ever created that are much, much shorter. Um, and you can read the biographies of any agent on our team. If you wanted to choose someone individually, just reach out to the main number and give us any context to what you're interested in doing. Again, my name is Adam Hancock. You have just watched a video on the Florida Relocation Guide, your smartest way to buy, sell, and or invest in the entire state of Florida. Really appreciate you taking any of your time to view this content, and we'll see you on the next one.